In this video, we are going to do an overview of a mech which has marched across the inner sphere since 2801, ironically decades after the fall of the empire that once ruled all. A frontline trooper medium mech, it would have a storied history, including being the mech choice of one of the greatest mech warriors to have ever lived. This product of the succession wars is seen in many places, but most of all it is the shield of House Davian. It is Saurian Enterprises Centurion. A medium mech weighing in at 50 tons, the Centurion is a product of the Succession Wars themselves, and in actuality, only had a short production life of 2801 through to 2845, resulting in a limited supply of these hardened, famous machines. Surian Enterprises would manage to keep the design alive by producing replacement parts after the destruction of its core facilities, keeping the Centurion line from falling into extinction. For much of its life it had a malfunctioning Luxor autocannon as well, until corrected with a massive reinvigoration which took place in the early 31st century, as new facilities were put together as new facilities were put together to begin the construction on new Centurions. The CN9 series would even be used frequently for experimental technologies through the various points in its history as well, due to how flexible the platform had become, and would one day evolve into an Omnimech design as well. The Centurion would even be a mech of choice for one of the most noteworthy pilots, Hi Allard Leal, one of the greatest mech warriors to have ever lived. The story of the Centurion is that of a frontline warrior, fighting across the inner sphere, though most prominently for the Federated Sons, Marian Hegemony, and a lesser extent, the Free Worlds League, as well as the Lyran Commonwealth, though its presence is felt across the inner sphere, as well from exports and captured equipment. This mechanical soldier, this chariot of a warrior, cannot be underestimated or forgotten, since its arrival over 300 years ago in the Inner Sphere. The primary model of the C9 series for its initial production run was the C9-A. This machine would be powered by a Nissan 200 standard engine, which weighed in at 8.5 tons. This gives the Centurion a maximum speed of 64.8 kilometers per hour, or six movement points in the original tabletop game. This allows the CN9 to move at an average speed of frontline heavy and medium mechs, making it strategically able to keep up with its peers. On a tactical level, the CN9 is not particularly fast, though for its era and for its primary function, it's not slower than one would expect it to be, as 64 km per hour is the average speed of mechs which have this function on the battlefield. For heat sinks, the Centurion has only its stock 10 heat sinks, but this is acceptable for its design, as it's mostly going to be doing low heat output at various ranges. For weaponry, the CN9 mech can fight across multiple ranges, and has the ability to do both armor piercing and scattering hits. For its primary weapon, it has the troublesome Luxor D series autocannon rated as an AC-10. This weapon in-universe actually has a terrible track record, not due to lacking its brutal hitting power, but because its auto-loading mechanism may malfunction or break entirely, resulting in a key piece needing to be replaced. And worse, due to the frequency of this, these parts have become increasingly rare for older models. This is not fixed until the early 31st century, when Saurian would open up a new, full production facility. Before this, the primary workaround was to replace the AC-10 with another brand of AC-10 or an entire other weapon system, though this had drawbacks as well. Outside of this, for in-close fighting, it is backed up by a Fotec 806C medium laser and is covered from behind by another medium laser as well. Finally, for its long-range fires, it has the Luxor 3R LRM system with 10 tubes letting it strike at targets at long range and inflicting multiple location damage. For its weapons array, the CN9-A is most well served, 
The auto cannon is for medium range, which can punch holes in the target all the way into close range. It's further backed up by its LRM-10, potentially crit seeking or peeling away other forms of armor. As the target finally closes in, the LRM is replaced by a medium laser for in close quarters fighting. All in all, the CN9 is a well balanced mech when it comes to its firepower. For defense, the CN9-A has a more than decent total of 8.5 tons of standard armor, making it very well protected. This level of defense allows for it to trade shots with heavy mechs if needed, as well as to act as a wall against most medium mechs that it will come across in a conflict, helping it fulfill its trooper purpose by doing so. Though it does require solid logistics to provide it with support in any campaign, the CN9-A is an incredible machine, and one of my favorite medium mechs of the era. By no means is it perfect, with potential ammunition explosions lurking should it take too much damage, but overall it's an incredibly solid, reliable gun platform with thick armor for a medium, and the purpose of marching forward with its peer designs to be a part of a large-scale battle or smaller tactical engagements. It should have been called the Legionnaire, as it is the ultimate trooper in whatever legion it is a part of. Successful and often in need of a refit to replace its primary autocannon, the CN9 series would see many variants. In this we are going to discuss three stock variants and the personal battle mech of the Allard Leal line. In 2915, a new variant would be a field refit in order to be less ammunition dependent. This would be the CN9-AL, which would replace out its Luxor D-Series autocannon for a large laser and a small laser in the right arm. Six additional heat sinks were added to the unit as well, making it run very cool and adding two tons of armor. Many would argue this is in fact the peak Centurion for its time, more armor and less ammunition dependent, as well as still running very cool. It's hard to perhaps argue to the contrary. During the clan invasion, it would be the CN9-D that would make its way to the front lines, a new production variant with Star League era technology. It would be the first major refit of the design in several ways. Firstly, it would use the new XL engine technology, increasing the Centurion speed to over 97 kilometers per hour, making it 50% faster overall, but with the risk of losing a side torso being a death sentence for it. It also uses endo steel construction to continue to offset weight. In addition to this, it would introduce the new, at the time, LB-10X autocannon, which is lighter, has a longer range, and has scatter damage in replacement of its AC-10 autocannon. This design, while deadly and unique, unfortunately does suffer from having an XL engine and being armored, though not well armored enough to confront clan battle mechs. An innovative take on the CN9 series to be sure, but one with mixed results for the time. The latest design I can confirm as per the ill clan guide on the subject is the CN10-D Centurion. A 55 ton version of the mech, it is the successor to the CN10B, which was the same weight. It uses endo steel to save weight on the structure and uses a 220 light engine, giving it more weight savings but slightly reducing its durability. It would also use the compact gyro to increase its durability yet more towards the loss of its stability, but at the expense of weight. Beyond that, it is very much in line with the CN9-D. An LBX-10 autocannon is the primary weapon, backed up by an LRM-10 with Artemis. In addition, it has a light PPC for helping at range, and an ER medium laser now mounted in the rear. While this variant does have its merits, it is one that feels like it retreads old ground, but not adding enough for the time that it was made. Still, much like its predecessors, it is a line mech and a dangerous design in its own right. The CN9 piloted by Justin Jiang Allard, father of Kai Allard Liao, is known as the Yen Lo Wang, and is a fearsome beast. Though it would go through several iterations, today we are going to cover the original model as it was when it was first piloted. It would replace the AC-10 autocannon of the CN9A base model with an AC-20 autocannon. It would remove the LRM-10 in favor of adding a hatchet to the design, 
while retaining its medium lasers and forward-facing both of them. This dangerous configuration was the end for many would-be champions and mech warriors in Solaris, and on the battlefield as well. Eventually his son Kai would pilot this machine, though modified it to possess new upgrades, such as a Gauss rifle. Overall, the Centurion has a storied history throughout the Inner Sphere. A line mech with a maintenance issue, it would evolve into a war machine seen across the Inner Sphere, with a recognizable design and an overall function that only seemed to improve on itself with new technology, rather than radically reinvent itself. A battle mech for some of the most accomplished mech warriors in history, there is a reason why they were drawn to this device at the time, and it stands still even in the latest era as a line mech for multiple forces, from the Federated Sons to the Marian Hegemony. Though it does have an ammunition dependency, and the risks that would run with that, it is still beloved by mech warriors who pilot it. It seems as though its reign in the Inner Sphere is nowhere near at an end. It is most certainly more lasting than bronze. Thank you for joining me here today. If you enjoyed this content, please consider liking it and subscribing to the channel. There is also a YouTube member program that supports this channel as well, and I appreciate your support as members immensely. With that, I will catch all of you in the comment section below.